Hello there, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to History of Turrican. probably already know that in the 1990s, Factor 5 released Super Turrican and Super Turrican 2 for the Super Nintendo. You probably also know that Super Turrican 1 is now available for Wii Virtual Console. What you probably don't know is that Manfred Trenz, the creator of Turrican, worked on another Super Nintendo game in the 1990s. Of course, I'm referring to Rendering Ranger, an extremely rare cartridge released in 1995 in Japan exclusively. I wouldn't even know about it myself, but I came across the name Targa in the course of my research and became intrigued. The story goes that our Germanic guru of gaming goodness, Manfred Trenz, was making a straight shoot 'em up for the SNES with hand-drawn graphics called Targa. Industry nervousness intervened, however, and it was decided to add a Turrican flavour to the burgeoning title. Later, with the success of Donkey Kong Country, Trenz's bosses decided that Targa should also feature pre-rendered graphics. Thus, Rendering Ranger was born. But enough history, let's talk about the game itself. In this game, you play the titular hero, a Rendering Ranger, who leaves the war-ravaged planet Earth to seek out the evil mastermind behind this unprovoked attack, known only as... The Q. The game features ten stages, divided up into the standard run-and-gun of Turrican's past, and scrolling shooter levels a la Catechis or Turrican 2. Trends delivers the goods yet again. Apart from the graphics, he single-handedly programmed every other bit of this game, as he had done before with Super Turrican on the NES. And it shows. The levels are huge and challenging, if somewhat linear, as there is little to no room for exploration here. Also, the bosses are suitably menacing and occasionally inventive. Luckily, you've got all of four changeable weapons and three regenerating smart bombs to keep your nameless foes at bay. The space shooter levels are also entertaining, being more than just the straight-up left-to-right open experiences you'd expect from a mid-90s shooter. Indeed, the more eagle-eyed may just spot a few homages to Turrican 2 among the later shooter levels. There's even an option to turn your ship around, which gives you some indication of what you're in for. This game isn't flawless, however. It's a lot more linear than Turrican's outings, and while there are three difficulty levels, there are a few very tricky moments. And yet, for its few slight faults, this is a worthy successor to a fine gaming series. If the game had been released with the original Targa graphics, I'd even say it was concrete proof that one man can still make a successful game. Sadly, by the time Rendering Ranger was finished, the SNES was entering its last days and no one in Europe or America saw fit to release this game. Virgin Interactive's criminally short run of cartridges only increases its semi-mythic status, a status that holds up well to replaying. Furthermore, this cult classic hasn't even been released on Virtual Console, further enhancing its mythic status, but denying the public a great game and the last, at least in spirit, of the Turrican series. We can't end on such a sad note, though. Join me next time as we count down the top five moments in Turrican history. Bye now!